Dark Shadows, number 17, VTR 11767, Air 12467, take one. My name is Victoria Winters. A little boy has had a change of heart at Collinwood. It is a change that affects many other people. In particular, one woman who feels her own security, indeed her whole way of living, is threatened by this change. You wanted to see me? Yes, I'm very upset. What about? David's mother visited him in his room last night. It must have been after I left. I guess you should have stayed with him longer. He was very upset about losing his painting. I thought it best to leave him alone so he could get over it by himself. As far as I know, though, nobody went into his room. Well, obviously she did, and I don't like it a bit. I'm very sorry. But to be quite honest, Mrs. Sard, even if I had seen her go in, I don't think I'd have stopped her. She is David's mother. Well, now, will you please stop her? Stop her from seeing David? I've told Mrs. Collins I don't want her to see David again. Maybe in a few months, but not now. But what if she wants to see him? How can I prevent it? Well, you'll have to do something. Make up an excuse. If you can't think of anything, then refer to me. But you must stop David's mother from seeing him again. My name's Frank Garner. I'm the attorney who will be acting for Mr. Collins in your divorce action. Oh, how do you do? I was wondering if I might have a few words with you about it. Of course. Won't you come in and sit down? Thank you. Well, what was it you wanted to ask me? <laughs> well, first of all, I was wondering who will be representing you. Lawyers dealing with lawyers make faster headway. We uh, speak the same language. Oh, frankly, I haven't given it much thought. Well, I think you'd better if you want this thing to move along quickly. Oh, well, I do want it to. You have no idea how much. Well, uh... But do we have to go through all this rigmarole? I mean, well, can't you just handle the whole thing for both of us? Well, uh, that might be awkward. Well, I don't see why. I represent the Collinses. My first allegiance would have to be to them. Well, yes, of course, but I don't see what that has to do with it. Well, surely you'll want a settlement. Now, as their attorney, it's my place to see that it's kept within reason. Now, if I were to act for you, I'd have to try to get as much as possible. So you can see there'd be a conflict of interest. No, no, there wouldn't. For the simple reason that I don't want any of their property. I don't want a single penny. Oh, what would you live on? Well, I uh, have my own resources. <clears throat> Mrs. Collins, off the record, uh, I think I must tell you, it would be extremely foolish not to ask for something. Oh, but I am asking for something. I'm asking for the only thing that they have that I want. My son. I'm afraid it's not as simple as that. But why not? I want David. Roger has agreed to it. I don't see anything complicated about that. What about the boy's interests? Oh, he'll be taken care of. Where I plan to take him, he'll have... Uh, no need for anything the Collins family could give him. You're forgetting that David is potentially a very wealthy young man. You can't ignore a fortune that's rightfully his. Well, would it help if I uh, signed something guaranteeing uh, not to touch any of his money, to keep it all in trust for him until he comes of age? Certainly, as far as the Collins family is concerned, that would clear up all the financial problems. Then draw it up. I'll sign it. It means that you'll be totally responsible for the boy's care. Mr. Garner, I assure you, I am delighted with that responsibility. I want only my son. Very well, I'll take care of the whole matter. 
When the time comes to go to court, I'll find somebody to stand up for you. It, it'll only be a formality. I'm very grateful to you. Mrs. Collins, there's one other matter I feel obliged to discuss with you. Oh, well, what is it? It's about that woman who burned to death in the fire in your apartment in Phoenix. Well, what about her? The police have been asking all kinds of questions. Oh, yes, well, they've asked me a lot of questions, too. I've answered to the best of my ability, but, well, I don't know anything about her or how she got in my apartment. I'm really just as baffled as they are. They've been banding about some rather unpleasant innuendos. Such as? Such as murder. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. Well, there may be an investigation, in which case you would have to go back to Phoenix to testify. Impossible. Oh, I'm afraid it's all too possible if the law insists. But <laughs> you don't have anything to fear, unless, of course, you're hiding some information. Of course I'm not. It's just that I've... Well, I, I've got to get everything settled here first. There's nothing the law can do to me. The only thing that can harm me is if I don't get my son. Well, I'll do everything that I can to expedite matters. It's very kind of you. I'll go back to the office now and start things in motion. Oh, well, Mr. Garner. If you could do everything to see that I get David as soon as possible, I'll be in your debt eternally. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Collins. driving away from here? Yes, he just stopped by. I called to him, but he seemed too deep in thought to answer me. Well, I guess I gave him quite a bit to think about. You did? Mm-hmm. <coughs> about my divorce. Is he your young man? I'd hardly say that. But would you like him to be? I haven't really thought about it one way or the other. Oh, Vicky, when a nice young man comes along, Every girl thinks about it one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Collins, I didn't come here to discuss me. Oh, very well. I can take a hint. Why did you come? It's about David. Well, he's all right, isn't he? Yes. He's oh. fine. But Mrs. Collins is very angry with you for going and seeing him last night after she told you not to. Well, surely I have that right. I'm his mother. She feels that as long as he's under her roof, that's for her to decide. But he doesn't belong under her roof. He belongs to me. That hasn't been settled yet. But it will be soon. Well, for the meantime, she's asked me to make sure that you don't see him again. And will you do it? It's my job. Oh. Vicky. I know you don't like me very much. That isn't true. Well, then why is it that you wouldn't help me to see David the last time I asked you? It, it wasn't because I didn't like you. But what was it then? I don't know if I can explain it. But try. Please try. It's, it's a feeling. Something tells me that David's in danger. I don't know why it is or where it comes from. I'm just sure that David is in danger. You're a sensible girl. Even if David were in danger, is it likely that it would be from me, his own mother? No, of course not, but so many strange things have happened since you came back to Collinsport. Such as? Well, for one thing, Sam Evans, being compelled to paint these strange paintings, all of them of you. But is it my fault that he has a fixation about me? I, believe me, I, 
I've never done anything to encourage that. But they were always on the same subject as David's dream. You and fire. But I knew nothing about the painting. I knew nothing about David's dreams until they'd been started. Can you be sure that Roger didn't... didn't tell Sam about David's dreams when they were down at that, that blue whale having one too many? Perhaps. But what about the way that David was affected by the painting? Well, do I have to remind you who brought that painting into the house? No, I told you I, I don't know why I did it and that I was compelled to. Well, not by me. I asked you to get rid of it. It was far from flattering. I hated the thing. But how do you explain the fact that David's face came into that painting. There was an artist in the house at the time, Sam Evans. He was much too badly burnt to paint anything. Well, how do you know how badly? He might have been faking. Why do you say that? I don't know, but his, well, his behavior has been... Well, you'd hardly call it rational. There was that fire at his house. I was nowhere near his house. After all, a, if a local drunk comes home, Goes to sleep with a cigarette in his hand, sets himself on fire. Is that my fault? No, I suppose not. You see, Vicky, there really is a, a logical explanation for all these so-called strange happenings since my arrival. Yes. But the fact remains that I've been ordered to keep you away from David. I came here to ask you to help me. Why? Because David will be the one who suffers if there's an unpleasant situation. But this whole thing is an unpleasant situation to me, and very painful. Will you help me? I think the water must be boiling. Look out, you'll burn yourself. Oh, no, no, I... Oh, you're right. You're right, of course, I... I must be more careful. <laughs> sworn that, that you of all people would have been on my side. What do you mean? Well, I mean that I thought that you knew what it was like to be without a mother. Yes, I do. Well, then how can you possibly let them do the same thing to David that happened to you? It isn't the same. He has a family. A family, yes, but not a mother. <sighs> what kind of a family is it? Roger. Hardly what I would call a devoted father. Liz, who is much too busy running an estate and a business, and Carolyn, who can't see beyond her own problems. Aside from me, he has no one in the world but you. That isn't true. Think of David, even if they take him away from me. Do you want him to go through life without the memory of, of a mother's love, without, without knowing that he was the most important thing in the world to me? Of course I don't. Then help me. I can't. Why not? I, I can't go against Mrs. Stoddard. I just need to see him a few more times. A few more times? That's all I need. Is that so much to ask? No, it isn't, but I can't do that. A few more times. Accidental meetings. No one need ever know that we planned them. I'm sorry. Mrs. Stoddard has been so kind to me that I can't go against her. Why not? I don't understand it. I can't. I... All right, Vicky. You would rather go against David and me, then, even though we need your help more. It isn't a question of that. Well, what is it, then? It's... I don't know. I have to think it over. Vicky! What do you mean you can't do it? I simply can't. She's David's mother. Please don't try to judge what's best for David. I'm not trying to judge. I'm just saying that I can't do what you've asked me to do. Vicki, I'm surprised. I thought I could rely on you. I'm sorry, Mrs. Stoddard, but I can't bring myself to keep a mother from her son. 
Maybe it sounds silly, but when you haven't had a mother of you your own... You must stop looking at your... seeing David and looking at yourself. David has a family. He knows who and what he is. I realize that. But if you could have seen and, and heard Mrs. Collins... I've already seen and heard her, and I'm not impressed. She loves him so much. I've never questioned that. The question is, does she, he need her? I don't think so. She upsets him very much. Vicky, she's had her chance, and she didn't know what to do with it. Perhaps sometime in the future, she can come back and, and try again. I feel so sorry for her. Vicky, no amount of argument is going to change my mind. I can see that. Then you are to keep Mrs. Collins from David, Vicky. Is that clear? Is that clear? Is that clear? Answer me, Vicky. Good. Now run along upstairs and see what David is up to. And remember, Vicky, under no circumstances is David to see his mother. Oh. What is that all about? We were just clearing the air. Why is it that whenever you clear the air, I'm always reminded of Lucretia Borgia? Please, Roger, I'm in no mood for your jokes. Who's joking? I'll get the door, sister dear. Hello, Frank. Hello, Roger. I've uh, just seen your wife. Bully for you. Hello, Frank. Hello, Mrs. Stoddard. I just told Roger I've had a talk with Mrs. Collins about the divorce. Is she being difficult? Oh. Quite the contrary. She wants nothing in the way of a settlement, makes no claim on the Collins estate. All she wants is custody of her son. Well, if that's all she wants, she can have him. David is the one thing she cannot have. I'll decide that. I may not have accomplished very much in my life, but I am David's father. We'll discuss it later. There's nothing to discuss. I disagree. Please, uh, what is it that you'd like me to do? Shall I drop the papers? Yes, and as quickly as possible. Just a minute. I have something to say about that. My dear, you always have something to say. The question is, am I to listen to it? Yes. Uh, excuse my interrupting, but we really don't have much time to waste. Well, what's the rush? Mrs. Collins does not want to leave without David, but she may have to, quite soon. Why? That business of the woman who burned to death in her apartment in Phoenix. Well, I thought she satisfied the police that that's all she knew about it. Well, so far she has, but there's been an awful lot of talk. And there may be an investigation, in which case she would have to go back to Phoenix to testify. And of course, you'll go along with her and act on her behalf. I don't understand. Well, whatever else Laura may be, she's still a Collins. She my, must be protected. My sister is very big on family name. Oh, please, Roger. You're becoming tiresome. No, my dear, I'm becoming bored. I want this divorce business settled, and I want it settled as quickly as possible. There are many things I don't understand, and I want to understand them before turning my nephew over to that woman. Need I remind you that that woman, as you call her, is David's mother? Yes, but she may also be wanted by the Phoenix police. It might be wiser to wait until that's over. I don't understand. What are my instructions? Go ahead as quickly as possible. Hold off. Liz, whose divorce is this anyway? I'm the one that's getting divorced. You're just being difficult. Well, if she is wanted in Phoenix, I, I, I think we ought to have that matter cleared up before turning custody of David over to her. You're just being melodramatic, Liz. I'd hardly call the death of a woman in Laura's apartment a drawing room comedy. I, I really have to get back to town. What shall I do? We'll let you know. Very well. Good afternoon, Mrs. Stoddard. Goodbye, Frank. I'll see you to the door, Frank. Frank, you just go on and draw up those papers. Mrs. Stoddard said I'll that... take all the responsibility. All right. Thank you. Goodbye, Roger. Goodbye.
Hello? Speaking. What? Well, that's impossible. I can't believe it. All right. We'll be waiting for you. What is it? The police have identified the body of that woman as Phoenix, as positively being Laura Collins. Well, if Laura is dead in Phoenix, who is that woman down at the cottage? Rodney Harrington makes an important decision and informs his grandfather in tonight's episode of Peyton Place at 9.30, 8.30 Central Time in color on ABC. Dark Shadows is a Dan Curtis production. <laughs>